Guys, it's been a long time since I've felt great to shoot a video and I've gone through a lot of crap which I'll get to in a later video but today I'm talking about some new upcoming fragrances exciting ones we've got Dior MFK we've got Louis Vuitton find out all about these fragrances coming right up thanks so much for tuning in this is Sebastian yes today we're talking about upcoming new releases landing very very soon can't wait to get my nose on these fragrances what about you guys have you gotten your nose on these fragrances yet? Let me know if you have already. Put a comment down below and I'm going to tell you all about these fragrances. But before I let you know about these fragrances, just wanted to circle back to Scent Club kit number five. If you haven't bought your kit yet, we have kits left. I haven't been promoting the kits this time around. As I mentioned, I've had some illnesses and sicknesses and allergies and all kinds of crap, which I'll let you know all about. But Scent Club kit number five is out. It has three great fragrances. Three awesome, amazing niche fragrances, perfect for spring wear. Uh, these are the bottles right here. We've got Fleur de Lalita, a green floral. We've got Parlement de Parfums Wake Up World, which is a amber fougere. And then we have One Day's Oolong Tea. Amazing fragrances, very indie, very niche. Uh, selling right now, I have a link in the info box. So get your kits uh, before we run out. Uh, and again, as I said, they're selling now and uh, it's linked in the info box. So let's go ahead and get started. We've got Dior Riviera, which I reported on back in um, March. I did a video while I was in France when I first learned about Dior Riviera. This is the first fragrance that Francis Kirkjan is creating for Dior, not when he was not creative director. This is when he is creative director. So this is the first fragrance he's launching under Dior while he is creative director there or in-house perfumer. And according to my research, it's Rose figs and green notes is what the notes are credited for this. When I spoke to the SA in France about this fragrance, she said it's kind of like a cross between Eden Rock and Balade Sauvage with rosiness in it. So this one's quite exciting. I'm anticipating this launch very soon. It's supposed to launch sometime, sometime in June. Let's see how it rolls out. Will it launch in France first and then make its way here to the States or will it do a global rollout all at once? We shall see. If you're excited about this one, do let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. So moving on to another fragrance created by Francis Kirkjian. This is for his own house, Maison Francis Kirkjian, and this is Aqua Media. So, as much as I don't like this collection of fragrances, the Aqua Fortes, I'm somewhat interested and excited about this one. Uh, I like the idea of it. Plus, I like the beautiful green bottle. And it has notes of bergamot, verbena, sweet fennel, woody musk, patchouli, green notes, hedione. Who's excited about this one? I personally, as I said, I don't like the Cologne Forte collection. It's a bit underwhelming for me, but there's a lot of you out there that really enjoy these light, freshy fragrances. So this appeals to you guys. Um, but for once, Francis Christian or Maison Francis Christian is launching a fragrance brand new in this collection, whereas the former or the previous fragrances that came in this collection were like flankers of existing fragrances. So let me know if you're interested in Aqua Media by Maison Francis Christian. Uh, I'd like to find out. So these two houses, MFK and of course Dior, and then the next house are all under LVMH. Louis Vuitton has a new fragrance coming out called Pacific Chill. Who's excited about this one? This is going into the California inspired collection of fragrances, which I'm always looking forward to seeing and smelling. Pacific Chill sounds great and I also like the green greenish bottle. Features notes of peppermint, orange, blackcurrant, lemons, coriander, may rose, carrots, apricot, basil, ambrette seeds, figs and dates. Whoa! What a collection of notes here. This seems quite complex for this very cologne-like collection from Louis Vuitton, but I'm interested to see what Jacques Cavalier, in-house perfumer at Louis Vuitton, does to this fragrance. I'm supposed to get my nose on it very, very soon, and as soon as I get my nose on it and wear it, I will let you know what this one smells like. 
Uh, afternoon Swim, I feel like, is the most popular in the collection. And of course, we already have two discontinued, Sun Song, and also we had um, um, Cactus Garden discontinued. Will there be another one discontinuing from this collection? Who knows? But if you've gotten your nose on Pacific Chill, do let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. So switching gears to a Estee Lauder owned brand, we're going to the house of Frederick Mall. We've got Heaven Can Wait. There's a film from the 80s I remember watching called Heaven Can Wait. And also, are Frederick Mall fragrances starting to sound like Bikillian fragrances? This one kind of has that kind of Bikillian type of a name for a fragrance. No notes or anything are found for this fragrance. It's just brand spanking new, I guess, revealed online. It's a fragrance created by Jean-Claude Elena. So with the, the fact that Uncut Gem was so, so disappointing for me, it was disappointing because of the hefty price tag. It was disappointing because I felt like it needed to go into a signature designer fragrance. It smelled pretty good. I just didn't think it was worth it. Let's see how uh, Heaven Can Wait will be. I do enjoy Rose and Queer by Frederick Mall, created by Jean-Claude Elena. He does some great work, so we'll see how Heaven Can Wait is for Frederick Mall. Moving on to Armani with Aqua de Joe Parfum. So, um, uh, the, Armani discontinued Aqua de Joe Profumo. Why the heck did they do that? That fragrance was really, really great. They got this. They got discontinued. At least I can't find it anywhere. They launched another parfum just so that they can launch a parfum when they discontinue something that's already quite good. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm not sure how this will be. I'm game to get my nose on it still, but. Uh, I don't know, but it has notes of marine notes, Calabrian bergamot, bourbon geranium, Provencal clary sage, rosemary, frankincense, patchouli. Once again, Alberto Morias, he's probably created a hundred flankers for the series of fragrances. Initially launched in 1996 by Armani. This is a long-standing collection. I'm so bored of this collection, really honestly bored of this collection because I'm bored and pissed off because they got rid of the best flanker out there, the Profumo in the black bottle. That was absolutely amazing. They've watered down the original, which to me reminded me of the Profumo. And now we've got an Eau de Parfum that came out last year, which was really, really boring. And now we'll get the Parfum. We'll see what happens. So a little bit niche here. We've got a new fragrance that's announced from Uniki Luxury called Zengi. So I haven't really gotten my nose on the uh, what do you call it, the mango fragrance that came out with the beautiful green bottle uh, a few months ago. But I, I'm, I'm interested in this one as well. Grapefruit, bergamot, cedarwood, vetiver, amber, patchouli, olibanum, honey, wine, vanilla, ginger, pink pepper. There's a lot going on in this fragrance. I'm just hoping it will come together perfectly. I feel like the, the, the previous two fragrances, although I haven't really played around with the mango, the, the, the Japanese themed one was kind of not my cup of tea, but we'll see how Zengi is. If you're a fan of this house, what are your favorite fragrances from this house? Do let me know, put a comment down below. But moving on to Diptyque, I had mentioned quite a few months ago there's a new fragrance coming out uh, from Diptyque after uh, Papier, or the Papier, there's a new one called Onabati, which is going into the dark bottles with a gold uh, face. Uh, this, to me, I've sampled it already. I've been wearing a sample, and I really, really enjoy this one. I was underwhelmed with the Eau, Eau de Papier, really underwhelmed with it, so I never really got a bottle of it. But Onabati, to me, sounds fantastic, and it smelled great. I tested a sample of it. Now I'd like to go, uh, you know, buy a bottle and test the, the bottle itself. But it features notes of bergamot, cedar, immortel, palm tree, Tree, amber, pentagram, Peru balsam. Sounds interesting, right? To me, when I was testing it, it was wearing like an amber fougere with a kind of a classic touch in there deep that reminded me of like a barbershop fragrance, but warmed up and kind of balsamic and resinous with the warmer notes. So really want to sample this further. I liked what I smelled from the sample and I'm, I'm anxious to get my nose on it from a bottle now. If you sampled it, do let me know. Put a comment down below. Maybe my nose was playing tricks on me from the sample, but to me, every time I spritzed it, it reminded me of a classic barbershop fragrance covered up in warmth and resins and amber and things like that. So we'll see how it is. So unfortunately, one of my least favorite fragrances from Raja Parfums, Elysium, is getting a flanker and it's being intensified. So those of you that are fans of Elysium, 
perhaps check this one out. It's O Intense, featuring notes of rhubarb, jasmine, vetiver, lavender, tuberose, thyme. There's orange blossom, juniper berry, black pepper, vanilla, black currant, artemisia, musk, lily of the valley, galbanum, and on and on and on and on. So there's a lot of notes and fragrances for Raja Parfums. I don't know if they actually really experience all these notes. And for me, when I wear the fragrances of Raja Parfums, usually the best part about the fragrance is in the dry down. You really have to wait for the dry down because sometimes the top notes are a bit boring. But for me, Elysium is one of the least um, interesting fragrances from Raja Parfums. I think Apex is great. Sweetie Oud is great. Uh, e, uh, Creation E is great. Uh, they've got some great fragrances. Parfum de la Nuit number no. 3 is great. This one is a bit boring. So let's see how O Intense uh, uh, is uh, and uh, if it's going to be a little more interesting than the original. If you've gotten your nose on this one, do let me know. But moving on to the house of M. Mikolov, there is a new fragrance called Gin Tonic. It sounds kind of similar to Elysium because for me it's an aromatic. Gin Tonics, they're aromatics created with juniper and things like that. So it feels like it's going to wear like Elysium. But it's tonic water, cedar, vetiver, moss, sandalwood, orange blossom, ginger, lime, pink pepper, bigarad, mint, and gin. Are you a fan of the M. Mikolov? Do let me know. Put a comment down. When I had Kayali over here, she had mentioned how she was a big fan of the fragrance or is still a big fan of fragrances from um, uh, Mikolov. I am a fan of this house. I'd like to really kind of like embrace it. Sometimes when the fragrance house has way too many fragrances and I discover them kind of late, it makes it a bit challenging for me to embrace the brand as a whole because there's just way too much of a collection to kind of really embrace and things like that. So uh, I, I'm, I, I like what I smell from this house most of them and I'm curious to smell this one but this one seems like it's going to go into that direction of something like Elysium kind of fresh sparkling metallic aromatic and things like that with the fact that it's inspired by a gin tonic and then we've got a couple of fragrances from Montal and Mancera first of which is Montal called Infinity. Infinity seems like it's a fruity fragrance and of course Montal throws in oud all the time but this is definitely a black cherry fragrance with a kind of Montal twist featuring the black cherry note, vanilla, sugar, tuberose, tobacco leaf, sandalwood, pink pepper, plum, saffron, vetiver, amber, tonka. So plum and cherry, I like the idea of that. Black cherry in that so it's probably going to be deeper, richer, more intense. I like the idea of this one. One. I don't like their fragrance called Intense Cherry. Absolutely one of the worst fragrances I've smelled from Montal next to Chocolate Greedy. Um, Intense Cherry, although it's not bad, it just smells boring. Like I bought it just to have some cherry fragrances and to do a cherry video, but it turned out to be really, really boring. I rarely want to reach for it. So Infinity, on the other hand, does sound exciting. I'm hoping it is going to smell exciting as well. And then Sister House to Montal, it's Mancera with Cosmic Pepper. I love the sound of this fragrance, although I'm not a pepper fan. I like the sound of this fragrance and I also like the sound of the name of this fragr fragrance, Cosmic Pepper. So it has notes of white musk with oak moss. There's black pepper and pink pepper. There's sage, there's tangerine, oud, labdanum, ambergris, tonka beans, and lemons. Of course, they're going to throw in the oud. This, this house and of course Montal are known for oudy fragrance. So they're gonna always throw it in. I, I like the sound of this fragrance, but I'm not the biggest fan of peppery fragrances. They tend to be kind of boring and one-dimensional. And they also tend to remind me a bit of incense. So whenever there's an overdose of black pepper, especially black pepper, not pink pepper as much, but maybe the pink pepper too. They tend to remind me of one another. Like I get a incense -y vibe from black pepper and then I get a peppery vibe from incense. So we'll see how Cosmic Pepper is, but I do like the sound of it. Moving on to the house of Tiziana Terenzi, we've got two fragrances from them. Uh, I haven't gotten my noses on a lot of their recent launches. I don't know what's going on. I need to get my noses on them. But Borelli has... Uh, Sounds interesting and a bit on the feminine side with sandalwood, frangipani, tuberose, violets, aldehydes, lily of the valley, vanilla, rose, ebony, musk, birch, ylang ylang. I like it when they throw in birch in a fragrance. I like the kind of smokiness and the leathering, leatheriness it provides in fragrances that feature birch. Most likely it's not overdosed because this seems like a tropical floral fragrance. And, th and then the second fragrance is Hayakutake. I think that's how you say this uh, fragrance name. Kind of maybe 
Japanese inspired, but it has notes of large pansy, sandalwood, incense, vetiver, musk, tobacco, orris, ambergris, eucalyptus, bergamot, lemon. This one sounds more interesting than the previous fragrance. Also, it might be a bit bland and not very exciting, on, on, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to get my noses on these two and check them out and see what they're all about. If you've gotten your nose on any of these fragrances I've spoken about already, do let me know. Put a comment down uh, below so I can find out. Finally, moving on to another house that I haven't spoken about in a long time, Jacques Bogart has a new flanker to One Man Show, and this is One Man Show 24K edition. Well, it's become such a long name now, 24K edition. Beautiful gold bottle. It does remind me of a few other designer fragrances bottles. But I like this collection. It's been around forever. It's been around since the 70s, I believe. And now they've got a new flanker. It's sandalwood with rose. There's tangerine. There's pink pepper, saffron, and oud. A lot of these fragrances in the One Man Show collection are definitely a bit on the old school side and also intense, masculine, and a bit animalic. This one seems like it's going to be a kind of unisex. We'll see. With the notes in here, it seems also kind of fresh. So we shall see how it is. If you've gotten your nose on this one, let me know. Put a comment down. But this one is kind of exciting to me, and I can't wait to get my nose on uh, One Man Show 24K edition. Up next, uh, there's a few more fragrances left, and then also I've got several bonus options from one brand. So the, the House of Strangers Parfumery, I don't speak too much about them. I'm excited about their Cherry Amaretto. I actually got my nose on it really, really quickly recently, and I liked what I smelled, so now I want to dig into it. Uh, they have a fragrance called Cashuli, which I really, really like and a few other fragrances, but this cherry amaretto was really delicious. It has maraschino cherry along with cherry, there's amaretto, there's brandy, there's peach, strawberry, cinnamon, tonka beans, grenadine, praline, heliotrope. Really delicious fruity, compote, uh, boozy, kind of a gourmand fragrance. Uh, I'd like to explore this one a little more. I have got my nose on it, that's why I'm really intrigued about it. Otherwise, I don't speak too much about this house. They're a bit under the radar from, um, I believe, from Thailand, but this uh, Cherry Amaretto is quite nice. And then moving on to the house of Tamin, there's a, a fragrance launching from this house called Bohemian Infusion. It's part of their kind of cologne style fragrance series that come in 100 ml kind of frosted yellow bottles. And this one's created by Alexandra Carlan and also Maurice Roussel. Features notes of labdanum, amber, patchouli, artemisia, myrtle, ginger, cinnamon, pettigran, cardamom, and broxen. So it sounds quite interesting. I'm, I'm starting to dig into this house a bit. I'm going to do a video on the house very soon. Stay tuned for that. If you're a fan of Tamin, let me know. Put a comment down below. But what do you think about this fragrance and then their um, last uh, fragrance? I'm drawing a blank with the name. Um, but they had a, a, a fragrance similar to this in a yellow bottle and uh, it's kind of a cologne-esque fragrance. Uh, put a comment down so I can find out. And then last but not least, we've got a fragrance from the House of Ormond Jane called Levant Extraordinaire. They already have a fragrance called Levant, which is really fresh and fruity and floral. But so now, what is Levant Extraordinaire? We shall see what it is. I'm curious to smell it because I really do enjoy Levant. This one has notes of amber, cedarwood, musk, powder, jasmine, orange blossom, peony, citruses, and pink pepper. What are your thoughts on this one? Do let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. But either way, guys, those are all the fragrances I wanted to let you know about. I'm very excited about these fragrances, and I definitely want to play with them more, either buy them, check them out, smell them, and report back on how these are. If you've gotten your noses on them, as I was saying, do let me know. Put a comment down. Are there any other exciting fragrances that you're uh, really anxiously waiting for? What are they? Put the, uh, put the comment down so I can find out what they are, so I can look into them as well. Um, do also not forget uh, Scent Club Kit number 5 is selling now. We are going to run out of this kit uh, uh, very soon. So if you haven't got your uh, hands on one, definitely get a, your hands on it. And stay tuned also for a video over the weekend. I'm going to speak a little bit more about kit number five and also all of the challenges I've had recently with some health issues and things like that. I feel like I'm kind of getting back on track now. Uh, the cold is almost gone but there's a bit of cough left and um, 
craziness. Um, I can't believe how long this uh, particular cold has lasted. Um, just doesn't seem to shake off. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today. There's the three bonus fragrances from um, Ormond Jane that I'm going to talk to you about that are very limited edition, but I wanted to highlight them. Either way, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. All right, Ormond Jane has three limited edition fragrances for Selfridges to celebrate um, limited edition fragrances that capture significant milestones of the British department store Selfridges in olfactory composition. So there's three fragrances. One of them is called 1909. It's bergamot, grapefruit, mandarin, cardamom, labdanum, sandalore, suede, sandalwood. So this one's a tribute to the opening of Selfridges, which I'm assuming it opened in 1909. I actually really love this store. I wish we had a store like this here in San Francisco or even all over the USA because I think the only stores like this that still exist are in New York City. Um, but uh, really love Selfridges and uh, everything about it. So I'm curious to smell these fragrances. Uh, that's why I'm doing this um, reporting on them here in this video. But I wanted to leave them as a bonus option just because they are kind of limited edition and uh, most likely you'll only be able to buy these at Selfridges unless probably if you go to the uh, the uh, Ormond Jane boutique which I've been to and I really liked. It's a tiny little store in a beautiful arcade uh, and uh, definitely the whole entire collection is there. So most likely these fragrances will be there but maybe since they're so exclusive to Selfridges maybe they're only going to sell at Selfridges. So the second fragrance is called 1984 and it features um, unique notes and this fragrance is a tribute to the Yellow Rose which uh, was originally bred for the 70 75th anniversary of the house the rose variety was first planted in Hyde Park in 1984 and is known as the emblem of the House of Selfridges. Features notes of nutmeg, blackcurrant, pink pepper, jasmine, rose absolute, amber, incense, benzoin, musk, vanilla absolute. Are you guys a fan of Ormond Jane? Do you enjoy their fragrances? I think my two favorite fragrances are Tolu and Avernia. I think those are tops for me. I also like their Amber, Ormond Man, and of course uh, Levant is a really great one as well. So maybe I'll do a video on the house soon if you guys are interested. But uh, 1984 sounds great. I think the whole entire limited edition series of fragrances sounds really great. I'm just not sure if I'm going to do blind buy and get these fragrances. And then finally 2019 is the third fragrance in this limited edition series of fragrances. And this fragrance pays tribute to the 110th anniversary of Selfridges and recalls the moment when the department store opened for the first time. It's bergamot, mandarin, freesia, jasmine absolute, musk, sandalwood vanilla absolute very interesting fragrances i am a fan of this house i feel like the fragrances are very wearable nothing too overwhelming they're very classy elegant uh, you know experiences and definitely curious to sample these um three limited edition fragrances if you've gotten your nose on these three fragrances yet do let me know i don't even know if they're selling yet i'm just very intrigued by them anyway guys thanks so much for watching today stay tuned for another video tomorrow Bye bye